Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hey all, Joe Fernandez here once again and I'll be going over Step 2 of 3 steps to Gladiator as a Survival Hunter. Before we move on, make sure that you've seen Step 1 of this guide to get the full picture. So Step 2 involves preparing for PvP, which covers how to min-max your damage as well as optimizing your damaging abilities to the best of their ability. You'll also learn how to make the most of your current control as a survival hunter. Firstly, it's important to know exactly how you do your damage rotation in arenas. This will look like this. Number 1. Use kill command on cooldown unless doing so will put you over 100 focus, or 120 if primeval intuition trade. Number 2. Use wildfire bomb if you have 2 charges. Number 3. Maintain serpent sting on your target and use viper's venom procs. Number 4, dub focus on Mongoose Bite. And number 5, use Wildfire Bomb if you have one charge. As for your burst damage, it will look something like this. Number 1, Serpent Sting. Number 2, Crucible of Flame if you have that Mage Essence. Number 3, Wildfire Bomb. Number 4, Memory of Lucid Dreams Mage Essence. And number 5, Spam Mongoose Bite and Kill Command. Now, when you want to burst, it's important to start with around 80 focus and 0 mongoose bite stacks so you can deal more burst damage in your burst windows. This could be the difference between getting a defensive cooldown or a kill during these windows as they need to be as good as possible when playing in these aggressive goes. When it comes to damaging abilities, all of them are very straightforward and easy to use apart from when it comes to wildfire infusion. It gives you access to three different types of bombs, being shrapnel bomb, pheromone bomb, and volatile bomb. These bombs need to be used well and are important to know what they do. Although if you have two charges of wildfire infusion when bursting, this doesn't necessarily apply. You only want to stack the bombs on each other and use both back to back for more damage. Shrapnel bomb will be used when you have high focus during your mongoose bite windows in order to maximize damage. During Pheromone Bomb, you want to dump all your focus on Mongoose Bite because it gives you a 100% kill command reset. So when you reach 0 focus and use Pheromone Bomb, you return to 100% focus, allowing you to gain a lot more damage. As for Volatile Bomb, you want to use this to refresh Serpent Sting Dots when it's about to fall off. Although be careful at using this, as when the target is near a crowd controlled healer, this ability has an AoE effect which can easily break your freezing trap. It's important to make use of these bombs and know what they can do so you don't accidentally break crowd control and be able to maximize your damage as much as possible. So be very aware of the bombs you have active when dealing damage. When it comes to crowd control, survival hunters have quite a large number at their arsenal on a short cooldown which will be crucial in order to get kills as well as peel for your team when needed. The abilities you will crowd control effectively with are Freezing Trap, Tracker's Net, Intimidation, Binding Shot, and Subida Sting. So Freezing Trap is the essence of Hunter gameplay, usually trapping healers as consistently as possible with other chain crowd controls in order to net kills against your opponent. First, you must ensure that you're trapped with the healer as best as you can. You can do this by having either a stun or root effect onto healers whilst they cannot get out of it so you can land your trap with ease. You have Intimidation Stun, Binding Shot, Tracker's Net, and Harpoon to be able to get this off. The stun will be your safest pick to get your traps off as there's no way to get out of it unless using a big defensive cooldown. 
Having a partner stun the enemy healer will be needed in order to get as many traps off as possible in the arena. So utilizing your partner stun on the enemy healer in order to trap will also be great in order to get aggression. You want to make sure you can trap the enemy healer and whilst doing so, make sure that you are prepared to deal burst damage. This will mean having your Crucible of Flame Major ready and high focus in order to mongoose bite, so you have guaranteed burst damage when you land the trap. Dilly does this perfectly here, including his use of offensive cooldowns, forcing the arms warriors die by the sword, their biggest defensive cooldown. Using a root effect into a trap will be a bit more risky, depending on the healer, but overall easier to pull off if they have no outs for the roots or trap effects such as grounding totem or teleport when dealing with shamans and misweavers. This way will help you get traps more often as well and could save intimidation stun for extra chain CC or to lock the kill target in place. Freezing trap is your biggest offensive crowd control as you will be using it for pressure. As such, you don't want to use it defensively unless out of extreme desperation in order to survive. An example could be when a holy paladin uses his blessing of protection on a fire mage to get a greater pyre off. So you could use your trap to stop the cast if your team is likely to die from the greater pyro damage. Another time when you could be using it on DPS is yet again for aggression whilst tunneling down healers and crowd controlling DPS. This will give you decent control over a game and be great against rest of druids, forcing them to dispel in normal form, thus being able to stun them outside of bear form and pressure them a ton. Dilly performs this well getting a trap onto the Shadow Priest, forcing his Trinket, then using his Intimidation Stun on the Trinket, reducing the pressure from the Shadow Priest whilst forcing out both skins on the Rest of Druid. Overall, you will be using your trap offensively on healers and it's critical to get them off as often as possible to keep up your aggression. This is highly advised as nearly all matchups you play as a hunter will revolve around your team being able to get crowd control chains on enemy healers to have an easier time killing the DPS and forcing them to play defensive. Doing this quickly can ensure quicker or easier win conditions that will be critical in achieving your gladiator title. As for trackers net, you can use this both offensively and defensively. Offensively, you could use it on Priests, Mistweavers and Resto Shamans by keeping them in place in order to easily land a full freezing trap on them. For defensive purposes, simply using it on any melee, apart from Feral Druids, will simply negate them from being able to pressure anyone on your team unless they have a freedom effect to break the Tracker's Net. Here, Dilly uses Tracker's Net on the Death Knight, buying him some time to avoid the Death Knight's pressure. Unfortunately, the Death Knight gets Wraithwalk, removing the Tracker's Net on himself. You could also use it in very niche situations against Windwalker monks. Simply using Tracker's Net whilst Touch of Karma is active will not break the Tracker's Net whilst you are killing the Windwalker monk if you want to try and kill through Karma. You could use it before Touch of Death ticks as well as it will have an 80% chance to miss, denying a lot of damage potentially. Intimidation is also quite a versatile spell, being a stun, so it's important to use it well as well as not overlapping with your partners who most likely also have a stun. So, how do you use this at its most optimum? Well, firstly, it's a great tool to help you secure a trap. So you want to use it on healers positioned far away from you so your teammates don't have to overextend and lose pressure on your kill target. This will be common against Restodrids or Mistweavers that can easily position far away from you and keep on healing. If using a different type of stun on healers, then you can simply use your Intimidation stun on your kill target during offensive pressure windows. You can also use it on rogues or warriors through their evasion or die by the sword to stun them through this powerful defensive cooldown and be able to hit them still. Dilly does this against a rogue during a big kill window which forces the rogue to use his trinket out of the stun as well during the evasion. In general it could be very smart consideration to use another stun on the healer into traps if evasion is the only cooldown that the enemy team has. This is so you can simply intimidation stun the rogue through evasion and if they have no defensive possibly kill them in this time too. Again, you can use Intimidation defensively too, if needing to lessen the pressure on yourself and see no kill window in the immediate future. For example, you can use this to stun a Fist of Fury, reducing a lot of Windwalker Monk pressure on yourself and giving your healer an easier time to sustain you. Like Dilly in this situation, you can simply use the stun in order to stop a target from doing damage if you have no defensive cooldowns in order to survive. Dilly stuns the mage in order to stop the greater pyro, which otherwise would take away 35% of his HP. As mentioned in step 1 of this guide, Binding Shot is specifically used when against many cleaves whilst playing with a Dispriest. 
This is so you have a root that doesn't break to the priest's damage, unlike Tracker's death. You could also play this if struggling against Restorative Destruction Warlock compositions. Using this to knock Destruction Warlocks out of efflorescence on the ground, then ruin them out of it makes it difficult for them to get back, reducing the healing input on Warlocks. For Spider Sting, it's important to know that it does not silence the cast you use it on, but it silences your target after the cast goes off. This is especially great against mages if used after they land a sheep on your healer, so they get silenced during the time they will want to pressure you, negating them for a while. It's also great to use when your enemy healer has no dispel for the spider sting silence against classes such as Restodrids or Mistweavers. In general, you want to use this against casters to reduce pressure on yourself and negate them from being able to do anything, using it as much as possible effectively. It can also be good against Resto Shamans spamming Electrocute Purges as it will negate them from being able to spam Purge during moments of defensiveness. There are also a couple of things to note when using Spider Sting. During Lightning Lasso it will not silence the Shaman immediately and only after the cast. If you want to silence the Lasso you'd have to do it preemptively so it can be risky yet highly rewarding if you manage to get the Lasso. As for Cyclone 2, it simply doesn't work, as for some reason they don't get silenced after the Cyclone cast. This is most likely a bug, but it has been like this for quite a long while, so you may have to get used to it. Crowd controlling well is one of the best traits a survival hunter has, so utilising it in the way it's shown and being consistently good with it should guarantee great results from it when playing it well. Survival isn't in the best spot and is one of the harder classes to play, so mastering it will be challenging, yet very rewarding. Alright, that's step 2 out of 3 steps to Gladiator as a survival hunter. Make sure to stay tuned for the third and final step coming out soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.